welcome back to my channel. This is the CNC router engineering series and today we will be selecting which spindle to use. There are many different types of spindles to choose from, so how do you know which is the right for you? Well, we can actually calculate and take measurements on your machine to find out what will work great for you. I have just recently found the last puzzle piece of my calculations. The machine will chatter if it deflects more than 0.02 millimeters. And with this information, we know exactly how stiff the machine should be to take a specific cut. Now we can know with big certainty what the machine will be capable of without even having to build it. You will always want to get your hands on the biggest spindle as possible. However, a few variables will limit how big we can go. First, we need to look at the weight of the spindle. Your machine should be able to move the weight of the spindle back and forth with decent speed and acceleration. If you already have a CNC machine at home, you can determine how much weight your stepper or servo motors can handle by sticking some weights on the spindle until the motors slows down. Usually your machine will have matching stepper and servo motors that are made to move the weight of the different axes on your CNC machine. So buying a bigger spindle might also require a bigger servo or stepper motor. If you are designing a machine and you don't know how big your step or servo motors should be, then keep an eye out for my future videos because I might make a video about that. If you are less affected by the weight of the spindle and need to know what is overkill and what isn't, then all of your questions will be answered now. You need to consider the biggest limiting factors that are related to choosing the right spindle. The machine's deflection and the required torque to cut the materials that you want to mill. I will be using my own CNC machine as an example and uh, together in this video we will calculate what spindle I need. The amount of torque and power that your spindle needs depends on how much material you want to remove. Therefore you need to find and specify some cutting parameters of a cut that you want your machine to handle. If you don't know how to define your cutting parameters, you can uh, hop on over to YouTube and find a video of someone using the CNC machine to take a specific cut and then you can uh, ask them what parameters they've used and uh, then you can try and match uh, that cut so that your machine will be able to do the same. I got inspired by John Saunders video on cutting stainless steel and I found a cut that I would like to take. I would like to be able to cut steel with an 8mm end mill. It should cut 20mm deep axially and 2mm radially. The end mill will have 3 flutes and each flute will bite 0.05mm into the material for every revolution. I would like my machine to move fast and therefore the velocity that the, the end mill is rotating at should be 500m per minute. This will result in a high RPM and a relatively fast feed rate. Now I have found a calculator online that will calculate all the resulting parameters that we need. We will use these parameters to calculate how fast the machine should move, what power is required by the spindle motor, how much torque we need for the milling operation and how much force the tool will exert on the machine. Okay, if you hop up over to Kenametal's uh, engineering calculators, you can uh, determine how much uh, torque and power is required to take each cut. Um, my machine will mainly be using end mills, so I'll go to the end mill calculators and I'll use the calculator that finds the force, torque and power. By the way, I'll have a link for this, uh, for this page in the description. Now I'd like to calculate a metric, so I will choose that as the unit. Now the first properties that we need to enter are the brinnel hardness of the material that we have chosen and its ultimate tensile strength. Now for steel, it has somewhat of an average hardness of uh, about 150 brinnel and its ultimate strength will be 350. If you don't know what these values are for your specific material, then you can always use Google to find the right properties of your material. The ultimate strength is also called the ultimate tensile strength. Next up, we need to enter the end mill parameters. 
uh, our end mill will have a, a diameter of 8 millimeters. I think that's a decent size for our mill. And I'd like to use three flutes. If you increase the number of flutes, then uh, the spindle speed will be lowered. So a spindle doesn't have equal torque at all cutting speeds. So what you want to do is uh, choose a specific number of flutes that matches the speed at which your spindle has the most torque. If you have bought a spindle, then your manufacturer of that spindle should be able to provide you with a torque curve that shows you the different torques at uh, a given RPM. Alright, so just to summarize, a smaller number of flutes will increase the RPM and decreasing the diameter uh, also increase the RPM. So in this example, we have a torque curve for a spindle called FM30F which has a peak torque of around 900 uh, RPM. So if we were to choose an end mill um, with a given diameter, we would have to match the number of flutes so that it would have to spin about 900 RPM in order to maximize the torque. Now, as mentioned earlier, um, you can uh, find a video of a given cut that you'd like to take. Uh, I found uh, mine on John Saunders uh, channel, NYC CNC, and I will uh, now insert the following parameters. Now, I'll just quickly go over what each of these parameters mean. The first parameter is the cutting speed, and uh, this is different from the feed rate. The feed rate is how fast the machine moves back and forth, and the cutting speed is how fast the end node rotates. Next up, we have the actual depth of cut. This is how deep your end node will go, and I've set that to 20 millimeters. The radial width of cut is how much material we remove on the side of the end node. If we go up here, you can see that this would be the radial width of cut right here. And the required feed per tooth will be 0.05 millimeters. Now, as far as I know, and I'm no expert at uh, feeds and speeds, but as far as I know, this should be a decent cut if we are going to take 0.05 millimeters per tooth. If we have less flutes, then the cut will require less torque. Uh, also, if we decrease this value, it will be uh, far easier for our spindle to, to handle. Now, the last parameters are um, pretty self-explanatory. There's, there's a question mark here guiding you through what they should be. The machinability factor is um, something that factors in the specific material that you have chosen and uh, that will of course also depend on the values in set up here which are also properties of our material. At last we have uh, the machine efficiency and this is uh, the mechanical efficiency from, uh, from the motor to, to the end mill and it says right here for a direct bell drive it's 0.9 our spindle will be a direct drive, so as far as I know, it will not have uh, a belt. Um, but I've set this to 0.9 just to, just to be on the safe side. Now go ahead and press calculate and we will get all our results. And you can see to take the specified cut, we will need a spindle speed of 12,000 RPM and we will have a feed rate of 1800 millimeters per minute. Now the really interesting parameters are found at the bottom. Here we can see the, the required power and the required spindle power. And uh, for the spindle power, we will be presented with two different uh, values. One is the energy in kilowatts at the cutter and the other is the energy required by the motor. So we can see that if we wanted to take this cut, we would need a spindle that had at least 2.14 kilowatts and be able to provide almost one newton meters torque. Now I'm not sure if the specified um, kilowatts for the motor is uh, accurate because um, it could be that it would be the very minimum power rating required. Maybe the, the spindle would bog down uh, almost to a low hum at, at this power. So you, you might want to, to add a 30% power increase. And here comes the very interesting part. If you want to determine whether or not your machine would chatter with this cut, you would go down here and you would look at the tangential cutting force. 
This is how much the end mill will be pushing at the end of the spindle. So if your machine can handle a force of 241 newtons without deflecting more than 0.02 millimeters, then there will be no chatter. Hello guys, I'm gonna need you to use your imagination for a moment because I just broke my measuring device to, uh, to measure how many newtons we are pulling with. So instead I've just attached this, uh, this strip and you just have to imagine that this strip could uh, measure the weight that we are pulling it with. So when you want to measure deflection, you'll need two things. You'll need um, some way to measure how much uh, the spindle moves and some way to measure with what force you're pulling with. So if you imagine this is a spindle, we would have deflection if we push it uh, or when it's um, when it's milling with its end mill. So this is the way that we would uh, measure its stiffness. We just simply pull uh, our measuring the device and we could see how much it moves and then we will divide the force with which we are pulling with the um, distance that we measured. So let's assume that we had taken the following measurements. The spindle moved 0.004 millimeters when acted upon with a force of 120 newtons. From this data, we will calculate the stiffness which uh, has the unit of newton per micron so that means that the machine will move one micron when you apply x amount of uh, newtons so one micron is equal to 0 0.001 millimeters so that is a rather small value um, if you measure the force with which you are pulling um, on the spindle in kilos, then you can convert it to newtons by multiplying it with the gravitational constant. And the gravitational constant is different depending on where you're located, but uh, in Denmark the gravitational constant, as you can see here, is 9.816 meters per second squared. When you um, multiply this unit with kilos, you will end up with uh, newton as your unit. In order to calculate the machine's stiffness, we will be using the following formula for, for stiffness, uh, where K uh, represents stiffness, and that would be equal to the force divided by the displacement. And this letter here is uh, called delta. This is a Greek symbol, and you might know delta as a rectangle, but uh, this is uh, the small letter value for delta. So if we want to calculate the stiffness, we just simply divide the force with the displacement. And the displacement has to be in microns, of course, since we wanted the stiffness in the unit newton per micron. So uh, we can convert the, the distance that the machine moved to microns, uh, as you can see here. And then when you divide 120 by 4, you will end up with 30 and that would be 30 newtons per micron. So in this example, we would have a machine that moved one micron every time we applied a load of 30 newtons. Now when we know the stiffness of the machine, we can actually calculate whether or not it will chatter, which is uh, quite awesome, I think. We, uh, we will be capable of knowing what the machine can do without even having to build it. Of course, this is uh, theoretical values it might it might differ uh, a bit in the real world, but we will be getting rather close, I think. It will be interesting to see how close we get once I have built the machine. So I'll read this um, example. A formula has determined that a specific cutting steel has a tangential cutting force of 180 newtons. So the tangential cutting force is one of the values that uh, the calculator spit out early in the video. So uh, this value will of course depend on how heavy of a cut you take. Chatter will be introduced if the cutting tool deflects more than 0.02 millimeters. Uh, how stiff should the machine be if the unit should be in Newton per micron? So now we are going to calculate the minimum stiffness that the machine should have. 
So uh, the machine or the tool is not allowed to deflect more than 0.02 millimeters. So uh, we will set our displacement equal to that value, which is the same as 20 microns. And our force would be the tangential cutting force uh, of 180 newtons. And when we divide these two values with each other, we will get a stiffness of 9 newtons per micron. And as you can see uh, above, 9 newtons per micron is uh, a lot smaller than 30 newtons per micron. So our machine was as stiff as up here, then, uh, then we would certainly be able to take this cut. One thing to note is that uh, this will be the deflection of the cutter so um, if the cutter is very thin and very long then it will of course uh, deflect more than, than this value right here so that is something to keep in mind the, the rigidity and stiffness of your cutter but with this information you should get fairly close now please do remember that this is the the minimum stiffness. So if our machine had a stiffness of exactly 9 newtons per micron, then maybe it would be a good idea to back a little bit off on the feed rate and, and force with which we are cutting. So thank you for sticking around to the end. Uh, now I'd just quickly like to summarize all of the points that we have been going through today because there has been quite a lot. So the process for choosing the right spindle is the following. First step, decide on the cutting parameters for a specific cut and material. This can be wood, steel, brass, anything that you would like to cut. And the second step would be to calculate the tangential cutting force of the cut. You can use the calculator from Kinemetal that uh, I used in this video to, to find the tangential cutting force. Next up, you'll have to find out whether or not the machine can handle the cutting force without deflecting more than 0.02 millimeters. If it deflects more than that, then there will most likely be chatter and uh, your machine is not rigid enough to take that cut. If your machine is rigid enough, then be sure to choose a spindle that is 30% more powerful than what is listed, just to make sure that it doesn't bug down to a low hum while cutting. We want to make sure that we have a little more power than needed. And then at last, step 5, you want to make sure that the spindle can provide enough torque and if it can't provide enough torque, then you can decrease the amount of flutes and the end mill diameter. This uh, will make it easier on the spindle. So thank you for watching. I hope you learned something today. If you enjoyed the video, then please press a like and perhaps even subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.